Good, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker here this morning is the CEO of uh, Counterpath and has joined us uh, all the way from Canada. Uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, his take on uh, mobile uh, and the rise of the enterprise consumer. Ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause for Donovan Jones. If you're watching online, this isn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> there it is. Okay, that's all right. Good. So I join you from, uh, from Canada, and uh, we're a, uh, just quickly, this is going to be more about, um, more about the industry than about our company specifically, but just quickly, CEO. Counterpath, we're a software company. We build applications that enable voice, video, text, messaging across any device, any network. Um, and for us, for us, we're seeing tremendous changes in the way people communicate. And I know you're all seeing these same changes. And I'll start with this first slide. So uh, if we would think about this 10 years ago, we would have seen virtually none of the people on this slide none of the people on this slide here uh, that are talking about consumer services, right? What we would have thought about is Photophone or Telefonica's newest offering or China Mobile's newest offering or Telus or AT&T or Verizon. But what we've seen, what we've seen is applications and services that are being not purpose built, but I call it user built. So tremendous amounts of people are using technology to communicate in a way that they want to communicate. So chat is an example. Uh, a, a lot of you in the audience may still you know, make voice calls as your predominant means of communicating, but many of us use chat as a means of communicating. So 450 million users use a little application here on the left, and uh, somebody thought that user base was exciting, and boom, there's almost $20 billion worth of value. Okay. What does this mean, though? This means that, that, that those kinds of services are being used not just for consumers, but also for enterprises. Why are they being used by enterprises? Well, we think they're being used by enterprise because the current service infrastructure of an enterprise doesn't match, directly match, with what the workers want to use in order to be more productive. It's not all about using Skype when you're traveling to save the company money. It's about using Skype because that's where your network is. That's where your contact book is. That's how you communicate. It's not about using WeChat or some of these, I know you know most of them, but you know WeChat or Line or Yahoo Messengers. It's about because that is how I, how I am at home, and that's how I am in the office. And, and there's really no difference. It's a blurring between it, right? But what, what they really want, and what enterprises want, is a secure way to do that, right? To take the same user experience, flexibility, using, for an example, last night my son called me on my mobile device using FaceTime. He's eight. He just touched on the screen, touched on the contact, and we did a little video conversation just before I went to bed. An eight-year-old, right? That eight-year-old, as he's growing, won't maybe even need a phone number anymore. He'll have whatever ID, whatever, whatever network he's in, whatever social circle he's in, that's how he'll communicate. So technology is already there. The users are already there. It's, for us in the enterprise, we have to figure out how to make it relevant. So we call this, I'm going to introduce a concept that goes through the rest of this presentation. This, this is called enterprise over the top. So it's services voice, video, text, collaboration, chat, that it over the top of any device leveraging the underlying network. So what's important here, what's important here is uh, it's no longer about silos, okay? There used to be very, and there still are companies, you know, in the industry, very well-known companies that are building these silos where it's, where it's server inextricably linked to a client, you know, and as long as you deploy that particular configuration, it'll work very well. But that doesn't work for every enterprise. Most enterprises have multiple flavors of devices, multiple flavors of, of, of 
uh, of, of call servers or communication servers. And what's interesting is, and I call this user-driven as well, the most important people in our enterprises, that the people making the revenue, the, the executives, are forcing IT, forcing IT to understand differently what they want from a communication. And it's causing a lot of challenges. So what's happening is, and, and a big bank in, uh, in, in the US, I was recently meeting with them, and a meeting with IT, and they said that all their executives have either switched to iPads or to Android tablets, and they want the ability to use enterprise services on these tablets. So they're sitting there going, well, I just can't, this is a big bank, we just can't give our confidential information, make it available on these devices. We just can't. And until the CEO said, you will. So once executives start to say you will do it, these problems become very important because you still want security, still want compliance, still want cost control, still want all the savings that are on the slide, but when, when, when executives start to tell IT guys you will do it, it starts to get a bit more serious for them. Now what's really pushing this? Well, there's many statistics you could use to take a look at, at, at what's happening, but basically we, you know, it's the anytime, anywhere worker. Okay, so, so people are using mobile devices for work, surely. People are using applications for work, surely. If you take a taxi somewhere, you're using Uber. Um, if you're buying coffee, you're using Starbucks. You're using applications to get through your, your, your life. But you're also working for multiple locations. So you're, you're, no longer just, you're no longer just at an office. You don't just go to an office and you show up and your IT, your IT manager, to, to, this is maybe 10 years ago, well even, no, 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago for sure, but certainly 10 years ago, you show up and you get your badge. And when you get your badge, your IT guy goes, here's your computer. And then he says, and here's your mobile device. And, um, and there you go. go, go to work. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. You mostly get a badge still, right? So you can get in and out of the office. But whatever device preference you have is a device preference. You're in that ecosystem. And then IT makes, makes it work for you. And what's caused here is, so this is a bit of a, um, that's a bit of an in the enterprise slide. I'm sorry, there's some technology on here. I tried to limit it. But um, there's really a couple of scenarios when you think about an enterprise. There's a call center, remote office worker, um, in your office, and then the sales force. They all need different needs. Technology, from, from a technology perspective, it's all slightly different, okay? And they're all served up, your voice servers are all typically served up by a premise-based PBX. Ter Terry talked a little bit about MyTel today. And, and, and so that's one such. And then, you see Link is, is, is Microsoft, so you've got a few. Well, over the last few years, these have all shifted to the cloud. And so for, for those of you, those of you that, that have been in technology a long time, the, the, the cloud is just the same thing, just not in your office, in somebody else's office, right? However, you can add a number of other services to that. And, and there's all kinds of services for optimization. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you can add more security. And if you go one step further, you can start to add clients, applications, and devices to mobilize that enterprise experience. Okay. Another example, yesterday, when I, as soon as I arrived, the first thing I do when I arrive at a conference like this is I enable my Wi-Fi. And when I, enable, whoa, when I enable my Wi-Fi, the first thing that happens is I get a whole bunch of requests from everybody that's in my office um, because my status has been updated. As soon as my status is updated, the 126 odd people I have through the world, um, they all know I'm available, so all of my messages that have been stacked up all hit me at once, and, and uh, I'm able, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm instantly on all kinds of conference calls and kinds of things like that. Um, is that a good thing, bad thing? Well, I think for me it's a good thing because it catches me up on the day. But certainly, it allows me using the Wi-Fi network to make calls for free using my enterprise ID, okay? Because it's connected to my enterprise. So that scenario for me, in this case, I'd be you know, an in-the-field team, right? In a call center, in, in, in a call center they want to save on, they, they want to basically incre increase productivity by linking an application on their computer to their CRM tool. We've got customers like this in, in, in banks that are actually, when, when they make a call, when they do anything with the, with, with, with the customer, it's tied to the customer record, it's indexed, it's categorized, they can log off their computer, their two-hour, four-hour, six-hour shift, the next person come back on and catch right up where that person was, right? So the technology is caught up to the use case. Let's move to the next slide. Well, what are the requirements? So I've talked about over the, uh, I've talked about over the top applications. 
Uh, I talked about different use cases, talked very specifically about the use case for, 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 for counter -breath. What are they? So you start with, it certainly needs to be reliable, robust, and secure. What does that mean? Um, the, the first thing it means is it has to fit within the policies and requirements of whatever enterprise these applications being deployed within. So if it's a large bank, a lot around compliance, a lot around encryption of the voice and the media and the signaling and the traffic. Um, and there's this concept called containers. You guys have heard of Mobile Iron and AirWatch probably and Good and Citrix. These are sort of these MDM containers so that some enterprise applications can be used by the workers and others can't. So you can bring your own device and as long as it's inside the container, it's secure. So this is what this means. And, and these applications have to work within these containers. Works on the majority of the devices. This is another one that's important. So, so you, you, you're no longer in a situation where you just have a BlackBerry, you just have a, an Android device, you just have an iOS device. You have multiple devices. And so all of the same information from the enterprise has to be produced and understood and visible and available on any device. A little bit you know, more difficult from a software perspective, but uh, it's certainly one of the requirements we're seeing. It needs to be compatible with the current UC platform. So what this means is it, it can't just work with Mitel. It can't just work with Cisco. It can't just work with Microsoft. It has to work with a, a myriad of PBXs. And the reason that is is because as companies get bigger, they tend to buy other companies. And when they buy other companies, they tend to have different PBXs. So we've got some customers that have six or seven or even eight different kinds of PBXs. The over-the-top client experience needs to pull together all those services at the user level. Because this is what the user interacts with. The user doesn't interact with the, you know, the, the PBX in the, in the basement of the enterprise. The user interacts with the device, the user agent. Also, it has to be customizable. Um, this is really important because invariably they have a different strategy for, for managing contacts. They have a different, um, different managing for uh, the, the managing CRM tools. They have a different way of branding up depending on customers, meaning they want the, the, the look and feel of the client to change a little bit. And this is another piece that, that we find is, uh, is, is very important as we're working with many of these customers. And then next it has to be future-proof. So the roadmap can't be truncated by the fact that a new device is coming on. So we, we were building for, for Microsoft, Microsoft slowed down. We turned it to, to, to Android. Android may, well, they, it won't slow down, but um, then you move to, to maybe BlackBerry as they sort of get their feet under them on the enterprise software. It, it, has, to, it has to have the ability to be future-proof. Well, this, this slide very quickly on the ecosystem. So it's a, and this is just, this is really just, you know, 10% of the names um, that, that are in our, in our industry that we need to work within. And they're all sort of form a, a, a slightly different, uh, slightly different category. So if you start here on the, just on the, on the, you know, the side of the slide has session board controllers and MDM. If, if you look at these slides here, these really control security and policy, and these are kind of the important uh, aspects of how you get into your network. Okay, really important. Um, if you start here on video, video makes video makes this a bit more challenging. Um, and then you move over here to PBX application server. This is all what I've been talking about today. So this gives you your features and functions, allows you to make phone calls, allows you to do messaging. And then if you go across the top, this is sort of this new wave that I'm talking about where you're connecting devices that are typically disparate, disparate or disconnected with the devices with the communications infrastructure. Okay? And you'll see there's a couple of different approaches. The first approach is with Link, right, Microsoft, where they've, where they've inextricably linked Link to the PBX, so a link client connected to a link PBX. So you can make phone calls with your mobile device on link. Cisco's done the same thing. With a Cisco client and a Cisco device, you can make the same thing. There are other vendors out there, there are other vendors out there, and you know, Counterpath is one of them, uh, our company, that the strategy is to have one client on any PBX backend. Okay, so you can literally have a Cisco, an Avaya, a Mitel system, and one client will work across all of them. Why? Because we've done the integration and interoperability, which I think is pretty important. Uh, the, the, the real key here as well, and some of the big banks are the, you know, these MDM companies. And if you think about MDM, many of you know what MDM is, but the simplest way to think of it is if you've got your mobile device, your, those of us who have um, iPhones, and you know how you take applications and you put them all together and they go into this little container. Think of that as the container 
that's supplied by Citrix or Good or Mobile Iron. And in that, whatever's in that container is allowed to work in the enterprise, and what's not in that container isn't. So to, to, to get in the container, you get wrapped with you know, Citrix or Good or Mobile Iron, and then that becomes a, a, an acceptable application that gets, gets to be used on any device that you have. Right? So that's how they solve the, the bring your own device challenge. Uh, and many big companies, you know, JP Morgan as an example, uses Citrix and Fidelity uses Good as an example. Uh, just a quick ROI savings chart. Uh, this, this model here, definitely scalable up and down. This was based on 100 users. So, so, it's, so a typical, maybe a little bit bigger than SME, but 100 users. 20% um, 20 uh, utilization of, of over the top or unified communications. Very quick payback here. Uh, and um, if you think about the payback, the payback is international calling, the payback is no longer needing a desk phone, uh, the payback is uh, you know, increased productivity about being available. These kinds of things go into a model like this uh, and it scales up and down and there's quite a bit of detail behind this model. We've used this ROI model with uh, you know, dozens of large enterprises uh, to form sort of part of the decision making on, on these kinds of technologies. and. Super quick, so I ran through it. Uh, so thanks very much, guys. The, um, uh, I, I think that the opportunity is uh, for unified communications is, you know, it's not only here uh, for, um, for, for, for many of you in the room, but it's growing uh, year on year, quarter on quarter, day on day. The, uh, uh, the consumerization of technology is really pushing this. So you think about the way our kids, we talked a lot about young people, and uh, the way they use technology is much different than the way we use technology or we used to use technology. Uh, one final story, I was at dinner last night, very nice dessert came out, uh, carrot cake, but it was done in such a way that it was kind of like a, it was like carrots in a, in a garden, almost on a road with, with, with rock chocolate. And, um, and I, you know, I was among a few other people and, and I felt a little bit embarrassed because I was about to, to, to take a picture and, and, and post it into my feed of, of, of the dinner we're going to have. Um, so I just very quickly did a little Snapchat and, and, and sent it out to people. But you sort of think about that. Now, I felt a bit embarrassed because the company I was in, but had I been with, with you know, the rest of my team or, or, or others, um, there would have been, I, I, I would expect that half the table would have been taking pictures to post the video because it was, so, it's, it was such a very interesting dessert. But uh, okay, so thanks very much, guys, and that's, uh, that's the end of the presentation.